What is up, everybody? Welcome to Limelight Wired. As a lot of you may know, a few weeks ago, Able Lights launched the Light Up Lockdown Challenge. And the challenge is pretty simple. A gear list and a track are provided for you. And you can arrange the gear in any configuration that you want using their internal visualizer. Other than the gear list and the track, there are really no limitations. It means you can program a pretty sophisticated time-coded show and play it back using Titan and nothing's stopping you. I know what you're thinking. This is your chance to go deep down the wormhole of time code. And if you've been waiting for a chance to do that, I'd jump in if I were you. However, here at Limelight Wired, we are always giving props to the live action club giving festival lighting on the fly busking wizards out there. In fact, we've decided that if any of the three finalists of the Able Lights Light Up Lockdown Challenge our busking shows ran on the fly, we will send you a swag package. Just include yourself running the show when you post. Check out their posts for all of the details on how to enter. There is a link to the details in the description of this video. Now, if you have no idea how to create a show file for busking on the Avo Lights Titan software, we've got you covered. Today, we are diving into a 15 minute crash course on quickly assembling a busking show file for the Light Up Lockdown Challenge. A quick disclaimer, uh, this video couldn't possibly cover everything that you would be able to do for this challenge in just 15 minutes. The Avo Lights Titan software is very powerful, can handle anything from small venue shows to arena sized productions. Uh, the intent of this video is to give you a quick overview of a way to do things that will get you started. And if you know any other ways to program the types of tricks we are showing you today, please put them in the comments. At Limelight Wired, we are always looking for new tricks of the trade to integrate. So let's get started. And if you want to jump to a specific section, we put links in the video description below. So let's get started with the rig. Avo Lights provides us with a gear list for the challenge, and we won't lie, it's not too shabby. What is awesome about this challenge is that you can arrange the fixtures however you'd like, which is very easy to do in Titan. Once you are patched, all you have to do is select the fixtures that you want to move, change your wheels to visualizer mode, and then you can move them around in 3D space. So we get nine super spikies. Nice. It's hard not to smile when you see these on your gear list. Anytime these guys show up in a rig, you know they're going to be a workhorse fixture. Uh, the BMFL blades. Personally, I don't like how these look in the visualizer. What? So hopefully put, putting them in the middle of the truss will give us some interesting beam patterns and make them useful. Uh, I put the wash beams on the deck. I think they're a great nice. deck package. They look great in the visualizer. And since we aren't really concerned about any real life problems or scenarios, these will look good in combination with the super spikies up top. They give you 20 generic PAR 46 LEDs. One of the strongest features in Avo Lights Titan is the effects engine. Using the shape editor, key frame effects, and the pixel mapper, you can do just about anything with a group of LED PARs. Show us what you got. We spread these around the psych for some beam effects. We are interested to see we are interested to see how differently each designer uses them for the challenge. Intensity control is always the first problem you need to solve. We've put our intensity control down in the faders. This allows you to build a look on screen and then ease the intensity up and rhythm to the music. Give yourself a cue list for each group of fixtures that you're going to want to control. Starting with on is pretty straightforward, but after that, give yourself some options to make your scene twinkle or whatnot. Here we have the same dimmer spread repeated in different offsets for a variety of different looks. You can get really creative here. Hopefully you will. Make sure that when you record these cues or effects that you are recording in channel mode. That way only intensity or effect data is stored. You don't want to try to pull up a look that you've built and have the pan swing around as you pull up the fader. Now this is just how I broke up the, the lights because I how I arranged them on the trusses. Make the cue list or however you break these fixtures up make sense to you. As we navigate the show file, you'll see the importance of keeping this hierarchy consistent and organized in a way that makes sense to you, the programmer. So the first thing to know about the show file is most, if not all of the palettes are programmed as normal palettes. What does that mean? So for our purposes, that means only the, when you record the palette, only the fixtures selected when you record the palette are in the palette. Why would I do this? So in Titan, when you don't have any groups selected and, and you select a palette, it applies that palette to all of the fixtures that are in the palette. So for me, I create palettes for different our, all of our different groups and that eliminates the need to select a group. In a live busking situation, you wanna keep your keystrokes to a minimum. Now there will certainly be different ways to accomplish this same end goal. So if you have a different style, put it in the comments and let us know. Next is color. 
A great way to arrange the palettes is by fixture group in the color window and to keep the top row a normal palette that in includes all of the groups. That way when you tap it with nothing selected, all of the fixtures change color. You can select different colors for different groups without having to worry about switching group selections and then getting confused about what palettes work for what fixtures. The disadvantage of programming this way is that you don't see which palettes are selected. Since you technically don't have anything in the programmer, you have to be careful when moving fast that you don't accidentally throw up Christmas colors. If you have any tips on ways to work around this, please put them in the comments. Now, to be honest, the gobo and beam window is going to look pretty different depending on what fixtures you're using. A good way to think of this window is as any sort of beam effect for any light. You can keep the same sort of palette arrangement like it's been set up here with the top row with all the fixtures and then the rows below them are your separate groups. For the light up lockdown challenge, each light we've given an open option, its first gobo, the prism, and a few different zoom options. Now for other busking shows, there might be so many fixtures that you don't have room for an all row up top. For example, when I'm using video, a good tip is to break each layer of the video server down and I program different clips that I'm going to use per row. Some fixtures have a lot of gobos and you're going to want to use those, or a wash fixture might have beam effects. The tendency around here is to build sort of what's needed out of each group. This has the potential to be the messiest window, but having some sort of workflow is important. All right, next is positions. This is pretty similar to what's been noted in the gobo and beam section. If you've kept the arrangement of your groups consistent here, muscle memory becomes part of building looks over and over and over again. Generally, it's practical to have a wash, a home, a cross, a fly out in a center position, but of course that will change from stage to stage. It's also good practice to leave a row empty for specials. You're eventually going to need to point some light somewhere for something and hopefully you'll get creative in your light up lockdown challenge and have, some and have some specific moments in mind that you can build for. It's worth mentioning here that you should apply a fade time to a position palette if you're going to change it live. You could either copy your palette fade time macros over from the library, that is what we have done up here, or you can simply select a number before choosing a palette. All right, next are effects. Let's start with movement. There are a lot of ways to tackle movement in Titan. People generally stick to the same three to four effects, pan, tilt, circle, wave, and then add one to two more that complement the architecture of the set. Some people like to keep the standard effects up here in the top corner, grab, up, select groups, and apply them. I like to take it one step forward and use playbacks. So let's talk about playbacks. Playbacks are kind of Avo lights more or less equivalent of an executor in MA. You can kind of program it to do anything that you want. So for movement effects, select the group that you want to record and give it the effect you like, then record it just like you would a cue, but instead of selecting a fader, you would select a playback. Then you can select it and unselect it just like a cue. All of these effects here only contain fixtures that match the corresponding groups that we've recorded everywhere else. So if you wanted one trust to pan and one trust to tilt, you could make that happen. And then the next song, everything could waggle around in a circle. When you start to record playbacks, you need to consider the key profile and release mask. We'd encourage you to hit the comments or the manual to get familiar with them. You want to make sure that the effects latch if you want them to, and that they also release smoothly for nice live transitions. We have also added some strobing playbacks here. This is only intensity data and channel mode recorded so that you can easily turn it on and off without disrupting whatever else is going on in the scene. And you'd have to pay attention to the release masks for that. A big factor with movement is the speed that the lights are waggling around. You could very well program different effects at different speeds for different tempos. Or, as we have done here, you could link the effects to a rate master and gradually ramp up and down the speed of your waggling. This, <laughs> this is available in the playback options of your playback or cue. We also have a BPM master where you can tap the tempo into the bump buttons and the console will keep that rhythm internally. It helps to link up all of the intensity effects to the BPM master. Then you can see as you start to tap in a new tempo, the blinking speeds up or as you ramp it up on the fader, either one works. 
The playback options for cues and playbacks are organized similarly. Once you're in the options for something, as you select different playbacks or cues, the window stays the same and you can change several things faster. If you want to go even farther down this tap to tempo wormhole, in AvoLite's latest release, they have debuted seamless integration with Pioneer DJ equipment. If you'd like us to make a video on that, let us know in the comments. The macros window can be anything you want. A lot of designers use it to change the universal palette fade time. We've put that up there. I also use it to switch my static playback pages that are down here. Right now, there isn't anything programmed into the other pages, but on a more comprehensive show file, there would be. It helps to have macros that go all of the intensity cues like this one or back and then it kill all, of course, to release everything that is going on. Hope that you found this overview to be useful to you. I know that we didn't dive into too many topics at detail. We stayed mostly on the surface talking about ways that you could program your show file to make it geared towards a busking situation. The biggest thing to remember is normal palettes. Normal palettes only have the fixtures that were selected when you program the palette in them. That way you don't have to select a group. You can just select palettes for your different groups that you've programmed ahead of time. Another big thing to remember is rate and BPM masters. Linking your effects to a variable fader allows you to really mix and match looks and one effect could look one way in one song and another way in another. I really appreciate you taking the time and watching the video and hopefully you learned some stuff. If you have any further questions, put them in the comments. We will be making more videos based around the AvoLite Sapphire Touch and Titan software. So anything you want to know, put it in the comments. And if we can't answer it there, a video is on the way. Check us out on Instagram and YouTube at LimelightWired and LimelightWired.com.